Experimentation with the F-84 continued to throw up a fascinating variety of variants. One of the more outlandish was the F-84H model, designed to be a supersonic, propeller-driven aircraft. This was truly a very different plane, and originally was designated the F-106. It had very little in common with the rest of the series, but was redesignated as the F-84H before its first flight. Two prototypes were ordered, with the aim of developing them for Navy carrier deployment. The aircraft employed a turboprop, and a series of propellers were studied for the design. Its first flight took place on the 22nd of July, 1955, and passed with no real hitches. However, the plane failed to live up to expectations and did not actually pass Mark 1. It managed to reach 670 miles per hour, which made it the world's fastest propeller-driven aircraft, but was useless for the Navy's purposes. A major limitation on propeller-driven aircraft had already been recognized. At speeds nearing Mark 1 and then passing through it, different parts of the propeller would be simultaneously traveling at speeds above and below the speed of sound. The stresses involved are massive, and the whole area of propeller design and construction needed revolutionary changes to cope with the various loads that would be encountered. As a test vehicle for the assessment of this technology, the plane was very valuable. Experiments with the F-84H proved the ruggedness of the three-bladed propeller and the soundness of the engineering of the power plant and aircraft. However, with the introduction of steam catapults, angled decks and in-air refueling, the Navy was able to abandon the project and employ true jet aircraft. This left the US Air Force to pursue the project as a matter of basic research and development for its own purposes. In addition to being the world's fastest propeller-driven plane, the F-84H holds another claim to fame. It's generally acknowledged as the noisiest aircraft ever built. The engine was a large Allison unit, developing nearly 6,000 horsepower, but this was only a minor factor in the din of the aircraft. What really made the racket was the propeller. At high revolutions, even in ground maneuvers, the propeller tips went supersonic. This meant that the plane emitted around 900 sonic booms per minute, and these combined to make an astonishing row. The noise was such that ground crew involved in the test series suffered malaise and nausea if they were anywhere near the aircraft during taxiing run-up or takeoff. This was true even if they wore earplugs. The effect on a carrier's deck of a squadron of such aircraft preparing for takeoff would undoubtedly have been bad for operational efficiency. The plane and supersonic propellers were quite sensibly abandoned.